What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like in the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. It feels a little weird now starting out each episode not staring at the bus that we used to have in the shop. But you guys may remember in the previous episode, we did have to sell off our 1968 Dodge Charger Daytona just so we'd be able to have enough funds to, you know, put some money into our 1991 Lamborghini Diablo that we now own. I just, I can't get over that. That is seriously the coolest thing. We, uh, we started with a Charger. We're now up to a Diablo. Who knows what sort of sick whip we're going to be able to purchase next. Definitely excited to see that. But off camera, I did a little bit of work. Not actually that much. I did disassemble the rest of the sort of undercarriage of the Diablo as well as disassembled the entirety of the V12 that we tore out of there. So what we're going to do today is, of course, be rebuilding our V12, hopefully using some good uh, performance parts so we can make a few more horse puppies. In addition to that, we are going to be reconstructing the undercarriage for the Diablo and, uh, you know, just bringing the car to 100% completion today. So I will see you guys after a brief little time lapse of the disassembly of everything. Okay, so now that you guys have been brought up to speed, so to speak, we of course have so many miscellaneous pieces in our inventory. I was able to scrap quite a few things that I knew, you know, we wouldn't be able to repair. Stuff like rubber bushings, brake pads, all the relays and fuses and things. There's quite a bit more that we could probably have done, but uh, I didn't want to didn't want to skip over too much, you know. But what we're going to do next is actually head into our engine building room and we're going to use the parts table, not the body table, because most everything we have in our inventory is just like mechanical pieces from the undercarriage. So what we're going to do is go through this entire list of pieces. I'm going to really try not to break anything because I'd like to reuse as much as as possible, you know, that's gonna save us the, the most amount of money. There's one brake caliper cylinder. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and buy that now and I'll just shut up so we can actually get through this and hopefully salvage as much as possible. A few moments later. Okay, now that we've gone through and repaired everything that we possibly can, I would say I was about 50-50 on being able to repair things and just flat out breaking them, so. You know, pretty good odds, pretty good odds, I think. But we're gonna come over to the brake lathe. And with that done, as soon as we put this into our inventory anyways, I wanna see just how many parts we still have in the red. Okay, so there is one of the uh, cylinder heads that I completely torched. I think we'll probably be scrapping a lot of that stuff or, or using the salvage container and, and getting rid of it that way rather than just selling it and trying to make a, a quick buck, I think. Honestly, the scrap points are probably more valuable than the amount of money we'd be able to get 
just selling a useless piece like that. But what I'd like to do now is actually get started on the assembly of the undercarriage of the vehicle just to see how much we actually have here because our, our inventory doesn't actually look all that full. When I, you know, sort of scroll through this, I'm really seeing a lot of engine parts, not so many uh, suspension or, or undercarriage parts. So really curious to see what all we actually have. So far, so good. Okay, here we go. This is gonna be the first thing that we come across that's more of a wear item, not necessarily something we can repair, probably something we'll end up scrapping anyways. But uh, I do think we're gonna mark just four of those real quick. Come to the store, grab four of those bad boy billies, and we are ready to keep going. So I'm thinking we're gonna have everything we need in order to get the, the brakes working again, which is good. That's gonna save a ton of money. Looks like we are actually missing two brake calipers. Not a huge deal, not a huge deal, just something else to buy from the store, right? But hopefully we were able to at least save the, the caliper or the cylinder. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, we got plenty of those. Actually, one too many for this brake system, but, you know, could be worse. And I already know I bought a wrong suspension arm somewhere. Yeah, like, we didn't we didn't need three of these. For whatever reason, I, I bought an additional one. Oh, and there we go. We're missing another arm. That was arm B, I believe. Grab one of those from the store. Upper suspension arm B. A lot of the times when I, like, find myself repairing things, I'm moving through items so quickly, I don't even acknowledge what the piece is I might have just broke or, or might have just successfully repaired. Oh, right. Wow, that is something else I didn't think about. The actual, like, suspension. The, the main suspension for the vehicle. These are also parts we can't actually repair. We will just have to straight out replace with brand spanking new stuff. So let's hop into the store real quick take care of that. I really just want to get the suspension done so I can show you guys the wheels I chose for this thing. I looked up a picture of 1991 Lamborghini Diablos just to see, you know, what sort of wheels people were putting on, whether they were aftermarket or or the factory option. You know, I had no idea. I've never seen one in, in real life before. So after looking into them, it seemed like most everyone that had owned one and put up a picture of it online was kind of going with something like a, like a silver rim to it, almost like a two or three piece wheel. Whoops, I definitely don't want to sell those. So I went with something I felt sort of matched the, the era of the vehicle as well as the, the body styling. You know, I tried to take everything into account when, when choosing wheels like this. So I feel like we got a, a solid option, but it does actually have 17 inch rims in the front and 18 inch rims in the rear. They're also a staggered set. What that means is the front width of the wheel is actually going to be smaller than the rear just because it's a rear wheel drive vehicle. If it were all wheel drive, that would actually matter if they were different sizes. But in this case, we're all good. Everything checks out. So let's go through. And now that we have all of the suspension pieces that we hopefully needed, yes, in order to complete the rear, I'm going to hit you guys with another assembly time lapse. And I will see you here in just a few minutes. honest, I probably didn't need to time lapse that. There really wasn't all that much to do. I did, however, have to stop myself because I almost put all of the calipers on, all the brake calipers on, without them being spray painted bright red. I don't even, I don't even know what I was thinking. To be honest, I have no idea what I was thinking. And as of right now, we're only able to put the front wheels on, the 17 inch wheels on, because we're of course missing a engine and a transmission, which in turn means we're missing the rear axles. So we gotta get those in before we can mount up the rear wheels, but uh, this thing is looking freaking sweet, dude. If we go into 
examination mode here. You can see all that lovely bright green underneath here. I did also forget that we're probably gonna wanna purchase performance exhaust, performance uh, fuel pumps, performance air filter, you know, all the, all the other performance pieces that uh, don't necessarily touch the engine directly. Speaking of engine, we should probably go assemble that, right? All we have right now, I believe, is the block and a few other things. Yeah, see, a lot of the stuff in here, a lot of the orange, red stuff is stuff we're going to have to just purchase, bite the bullet and purchase brand new. And then some of the other stuff, like the spark plugs, like that's another thing we're going to want performance variants of. So even though, yeah, we already bought a few new ignition coils in the previous episode, we're actually going to be either scrapping or selling selling haven't decided yet and uh, we'll be replacing that with the red performance variant because remember ladies and gents red means fast having said that though on the engine block i don't really think red is the color that's just not really the move we're gonna come into the paint shop here and we're gonna be spraying the block of this vehicle black because that's how they usually are from the factory if they're not black then they're like this, I guess, sort of just a metallic silver type color. So we're gonna be doing this for a couple of key components on the engine. The next thing I wanna paint is actually the valve covers. If we have some, some new ones of those, some non-damaged ones, here we go. I think we're gonna spray these the same metallic red that we used for the brake calipers just to help tie everything, you know, together. So we got one side done. We're gonna knock out the other side right here. And then what else do we have, I guess? The cylinder heads, but those we're going to probably be purchasing performance variants of, so we might actually have to hold off on the rest of the painting for right now. For right now. Actually, hang on. Oil pan. That's an easy one. We're just going to do gloss black on that, just like the engine block itself. Oh, dude, I didn't even realize you could spray paint the rear springs. Actually, probably the front springs, too, for that matter. But that's pretty sweet, so they don't actually have to stay yellow when you assemble them. You could change the color out for something else the more you know yeah i think all of the other components in here we can uh, we can just wait on because a lot of them are going to be a performance variant we're going to end up changing them anyways so with that being said ladies and gents i figure now's the best time to get us going with yet another assembly time lapse i'll see you guys here in a few minutes Just like that, we now have a 100% complete V12 engine for the Diablo. This thing should hopefully make some serious horse puppies. I think, personally, it would just be the bee's knees if we could hit a thousand horse puppies on the dyno today. Mainly because that number looks really, really good, both in a thumbnail or in the title of the video. But time will tell. Of course, now we have a whole plethora of parts in our inventory that we either didn't use because we needed a performance variant or just didn't use because I bought too many things. So rather than scrapping parts that still have 100% durability, I'm gonna scrap everything that doesn't have 100% and everything that does we're just gonna sell. I feel like that's how we'll make the most money out of this. Many, many minutes later. Okay, come to find out, I don't think we can actually scrap parts that still have 100% durability. That, you know, doesn't really make much sense, does it? Oh, 
Dude, we're missing our gearbox. I might have accidentally scrapped the gearbox. Well, if we got this far with the gearbox still in our inventory and it not being 100% repaired, I don't think we had the ability to do so. It was probably far too damaged. So let's go ahead and uh, pop, the, pop the trunk on this thing. We gotta move the crane over here so we can get our new and improved V12 plopped back in. I really am pretty excited to see if we can get uh, some serious horse puppies out of this bad boy. But surprisingly with this engine, we weren't able to upgrade the camshafts. So we have four still factory, totally stock cams in upgraded heads. So I don't know how that's gonna perform. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but we'll get her thrown up in there. Okay, what else, what else do we need uh, apart from the gearbox? I think we're good now in the engine bay. We should be good up underneath the frunk as well. I might actually get rid of the rear mufflers and uh, and we'll see if we have an upgraded version of those from the performance shop. I feel like that could really help out the, the horse puppies for sure. You know, let things breathe a little bit more. All right, and as for the gearbox, I'm actually not gonna be replacing it with the original. Rather, I wanna get a custom gearbox Still no idea what we can really use this for. I know there's a, an additional thing in the dino room that we can sort of fine tune the gearbox somehow. I would imagine you can do like gear changes and, and things, but we'll see once we get over there. Put in the new axles or the repaired axles, I should say. And the last step here is gonna be throwing on the 18 inch wheels in the rear, dude. That's really gonna complete the look of this thing, truly. Go ahead and lower her down. We'll see how she's looking, dude. Those rims, though. Seriously, the rims are just, they're so period correct. I feel like it just kind of makes the car. Does it not? I suppose we can probably get rid of the crane. Not gonna be needing that anymore. So everything's good to go, right? Everything checks out. We're at 99% parts, which means we probably forgot something. What did we, what did we forget? Oh my good golly. Um, yeah, we're gonna make some serious buck on this if and when we ever decide to turn around and sell it. Even missing one piece, we're still sitting at 217,000 buckaroonies. Okay, obviously we're missing another part. Let's scroll through here. It is a starter. Okay, good to know though. And this is one of the few vehicles you actually have to install the starter from underneath. Normally it's always like, oh, you have to be in the engine bay. You have to be in the engine bay to do this. This is one of the few. Oh, we already had one. How did we already have one? Maybe we were able to repair it. I really don't remember. It's only been like 20 minutes and I already don't remember. Now that we've got the starter installed, we should be, oh yeah, dude, look at that. 100% all across the board. We are looking super, super good here. And now if we take a look at the car summary, we're up to $236,000 if we were to turn around and sell this thing. But of course, we still haven't tuned it. We haven't aligned it. We haven't really done all the finishing touches and things. So we're gonna get this thing moved over to the test path. Right, we don't have any oil. We don't have any fluids in the vehicle at all, period. So uh, give me just a moment and we will continue on. I didn't even bring the vehicle in here to use the actual test path. The only reason I brought it in here was so we could get a proper alignment on the thing and also just so we could get the headlights aligned as well. There we be. Okay, so let's come back over here. 236 still. So having a fully aligned vehicle and having a vehicle with the headlamps that have been aligned doesn't actually improve the overall value of it, as one might expect, I guess. I, I don't know what I was expecting. And last but not least, dude, we gotta get this thing moved over to the dyno so we can see what sort of horse puppy she's gonna put down. First, let's go over to the tuning. Okay, yes, so this is where we're actually gonna be able to add or or subtract gears. I think having this in a six speed would be really cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to figure out some sort of ratio that's gonna work for that. One minute thirty seven seconds later. Okay, here we go. I think this is what we're gonna go with. So I left the final ratio at four how it was before. I don't know if that's a good decision or a bad one. Feel free to let me know down in the comments. But first gear maxes out at 69 miles per hour for no particular reason, obviously. Then second at 100 miles per hour. Third is 125, fourth 150, fifth 175, and finally sixth gear should hopefully cap out at 225. Will it have the horsepower to back the, the transmission we've now fitted to it? I have no idea. 
But uh, as soon as we add oil, we'll be able to find out. Okay, this time for sure, dude. The anticipation is honestly killing me. So just to sort of recap here before we get her going, factory power should be 456, 402 foot-pounds of torque. So we're gonna see. I'd, I'd like to think we at least doubled that with the amount of performance parts we put on it. If it doesn't perform how we want, we have the air filter and a couple of other things we can change out. Well, it's extremely loud. Oh, also, we just about, just about doubled the horsepower. We're about 100 horsepower shy, and it's also very linear. I guess that's what happens when you're able to go 69 miles per hour in just first gear. But I'm pretty happy with that so far, so we're looking at roughly like a 75% performance boost overall. But we're going to move this back into car lifter A right quick. And I'm going to go through and, and change out that air filter for the performance variant. Change out the uh, the fuel pumps as well. We have two of those that are still factory, so hopefully swapping those things around we'll be able to push the envelope just a little bit more. All right, now that we have the upgraded air filter fitted to the vehicle as well as the two upgraded fuel pumps, I'm hoping that we'll be able to pick up a few horsepower. I'm not expecting us to be able to actually double our initial horsepower just uh, just from those three things that we've changed, but you never know, I guess. You never know. You know what? It actually picked up quite a bit. We're sitting at 830 horsepower, 712 foot-pounds of torque. So that is a gain of 374 horse and 310 foot-pounds of torque. Golly, this thing is a ripper. It's not quite a thousand horsepower, but at least now I can put somewhere in the title or even in the thumbnail, 800 plus horsepower Lamborghini Diablo, right? That's That's got a cool ring to it. Of course, I'm not gonna be satisfied with just running this thing on the dyno. I gotta get behind the wheel of it myself so we can really see how it handles. Today, we're gonna be trying out the speed track instead of the, uh, the usual place. Oh my God, is this thing loud or what? Is it that loud in the cab? It is just as loud in the cab. Okay, hang on just a second. We're gonna restart and I dialed it back just a little bit, so we'll try this out. Dude, it just, it's got too much power. It's got too much power, plain and simple. Even turning it down, it is still extremely loud. Here, I gotta, I gotta turn it down on my end too. I only turned it down for you guys. Okay. Jesus. All right, let's try it. Let's try it one more time. Let's try it one more time. Rear wheel drive, 800 plus horsepower. Of course it's gonna be squirrely, but I didn't expect it to be that squirrely. So we've tuned this transmission. Whoa, we are flying, dude. We've tuned this transmission to hopefully top out sixth gear 225 miles an hour. Let's see if we can get there. Oh, we can easily get there, and it's got more to give, dude. It's got more to give. I bet you this thing could hit 300 miles an hour easy. Wait, does the road... The road actually ends. Oh, I was not expecting that. Okay, that's good to know for next time, I suppose. So, long story short, I mean, this thing is an absolute ripper, as we expected. I'm kind of in love with it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of in love with it. Just... Just a little bit. Something about a yellow Lamborghini, dude. I don't know what it is. But I think that's probably where we're gonna wind down this episode at for today. Once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, to help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.